where not just women are in danger, but all marginalized people, where being uniquely different right now might truly be considered a crime. It seems as though we had all slipped into a false sense of comfort, that justice would prevail and that good would win in the end. Well, good did not win this election, but good will win in the end. So what today means is that we are far from the end. Today marks the beginning, the beginning of our story. The revolution starts here. The fight for the right to be free, to be who we are, to be equal. Let's march together through this darkness and with each step know that we are not afraid. That we are not alone. That we will not back down. That there is power in our unity and that no opposing force stands a chance in the face of true solidarity. And to our detractors that insist that this march will never add up to anything. Austin Red here with Friday Java, a weekly magazine of political theory, polling, and commentary. It is part of the Nepean history called people that make up this fascinating journey. We are part of the Obama network. For that, we make no apologies. What we pledge to do is give you the facts on a bridge to history, what body politics is, the most up-to-date theories of political science and cephalogy. Stay tuned for this incredible ride. Boston Red, peace out. This is Friday Java on the 9th of March, 2018, from WBRN Radio and on the Boston Red Network. We roll along here. International Women's Day uh, was on Thursday, celebrated throughout the world as it normally is. And we had a production. We invite you to stay tuned to it or to tune into it. Uh, Very good production. We covered it from all angles. From Spain. In uh, Barcelona, Madrid. And in uh, Catanona. The uh, part of Spain that came to prominence their uh, succession movement there progressed throughout that area we'll uh, talk about it uh, over five million uh, people were involved in a general strike in uh, Spain and it was the only one that had a general strike but throughout the world there were activities uh, from Iran uh, to Afghanistan people risked their lives or women risked their lives in Afghanistan in Iran, they were doing a race. Literally, what's the significance of doing races? Well, women normally in parts of Iran and also in uh, Saudi Arabia are normally not seen out running down the street uh, racing. You think that's a bit odd? Well, it it is a bit odd there. And also the significance of women uh, being out on the uh, streets and uh, feeling uh, safe. That happens in the so-called developing, developed world, as in the U.S. Women are not safe because of the number of sexual assaults, etc. The Me Too movement has uh, taken on a weight and political significance on an international scale. The uh, lady that uh, invented Me Too, an African-American lady, uh, very famous for that, particular hashtag you see it on uh, Twitter 
and uh, you'll continue to see it on Twitter as things are unraveling. Enough is enough. Movements also <coughs> have an <coughs> excuse me have an effect on what is uh, happening in the body politic in uh, various uh, countries. Uh, we'll have uh, some analysis of that. And uh, we'll also have the people from the University of Virginia at uh, Charlottesville. But the news today is uh, from the uh, capital of the Democratic Republic of Korea. The leader there, Mr. Ung, has agreed to meet uh, with uh, D.J. Trump. <clears throat> now, it has been uh, spinned uh, several different ways uh, here, but the essence of it is that uh, D.J. Trump will be the first American uh, president to meet with the president of the Democratic Republic of Korea. That war has been going on uh, since uh, 1950. Very, very long time. And it's still a declared war, uh, depending on which outlet you look uh, to, uh, the New York Times, because that is a, uh, the Times is one of the bigger voices in America on foreign policy and also from the Washington Post and uh, Reuters. The headline here, uh, Trump accepts uh, Kim Jong-un's invitation to discuss the uh, Korean uh, nuclear program. He had invited uh, Trump uh, there. I don't see where it is. Uh, DJ Trump accepted the invitation and uh, Chu uh, Yu the uh, official from the Republic of Korea, known here as uh, South Korea, told reporters that the president would meet uh, with uh, President Kim within uh, uh, President Un within uh, two months. So we're looking we're in March, April, and May. I assume after May Day or whatever. He expressed his e eagerness to uh, meet. Uh, D, President D.J. Trump, as soon as possible, uh, Mr. Chow said at the White House on uh, Thursday evening, it was, I believe, at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, was a surprise announcement. He agreed to meet uh, Kim uh, Jong-un uh, by May uh, to achieve uh, permanent denuclearization, and that would be of the Korean uh, Peninsula. We're talking about... Uh, the uh, nuclear capabilities uh, of the uh, Korean uh, Republic uh, in uh, Seoul and also uh, that region, uh, Japan, is brought in there. So we're talking about getting uh, nuclear weapons out of the Korean uh, Peninsula. That will be much harder to do, uh, period. Also, uh, no tests uh, by the uh, Democratic Republic of Korea during the period. Uh, D.J. Trump added, great project, uh, uh, progress being uh, made, but sanctions will remain until an agreement is reached. Uh, this is a little bit of what, what used to be called carrot stick, but it doesn't uh, matter that much. Uh, the Koreans have had uh, sanctions and have had war since uh, 1950, so nothing is new uh, there. And this is a different situation, a very long-running uh, conflict that uh, predated uh, Vietnam. And that has to be realized. The U.S., in terms of military conflict within the so-called Asian areas, uh, have not fared well. In fact, they never won a conflict there, a disaster in uh, Vietnam, in uh, what uh, Cambodia, in Laos, those all went down like dominoes and stayed down, uh, so to speak. That is the reality of the policy. Not only that, if you go to Afghanistan, the uh, Taliban is still in business there now more than ever. You go to Iraq, basically the uh, same uh, situation there. So no progress has been uh, made uh, there, uh, period, uh, so here there could be some uh, uh, progress uh, made. Uh, there will be at least an attempt to make uh, progress. And what has happened there is Mr. Kim has, as LBJ would say, took the bull by the proverbial horn 
and a move this forward. So now he elevates himself to, quite literally, to the uh, same uh, level as a DJ Trump. DJ Trump may be the taller person, but uh, the elevator lift is on uh, Mr. Kim. He is now, Mr. Um, he is now on an equal level, and this will be seen in the world from an international perspective. We uh, will talk about this, obviously, more on uh, BR on the world. But the situation is, is how the world uh, perceives this. The world perceives things differently than the corporate press in the U.S., and we looked at it from uh, several angles here. We're presenting at this time the uh, view from New York, is, which is the home for, quote-unquote, the foreign policy. And from Washington, the political uh, capital there. And their uh, political uh, writers. Well, what this has basically done is this has put them all in the dark. D.J. Trump not being a conventional president. Now, how much D.J. Trump will be able to swim against the current, uh, so to speak, American foreign policy as laid down by the racist Woodrow Wilson. Wilsonian uh, policy has uh, been there. There were other attempts at having a meeting, but um, with the uh, administration in Phnom Penh. But this not happened uh, there. Uh, President Clinton was going to do it. It didn't happen during Clinton. Clinton only met after he left the White House. Now, D.J. Trump actually popped in, as they put it here from the the Times, into the White House briefing room shortly after 5 to tell reporters that uh, would be a major announcement that was at uh, 7 uh, uh, p.m. uh, Washington time, or uh, uh, would it be 18, uh, let's see uh, here... uh, 16, 17, 18, and 1900 hours. We'll get that right in a minute here. So that was how the meeting was set up. Uh, DJ uh, Trump, uh, the official, uh, said, uh, then asked Mr. Cho uh, to tell him about his meeting uh, with Kim. And evidently he told him about his meeting with Kim, otherwise known as Rocket Man, Little Rocket Man, period. According to the Times, it kept a, a day of swirling a drama at the White House in which the president defied his own party, announcing sweeping uh, tariffs. Uh, the Koch brothers, incidentally, uh, come out against the uh, tariffs. That is uh, 25% on steel and 10% on uh, aluminum or aluminum. But then comes some exemptions uh, from it. By announcing the changes uh, sought to ignore a mushrooming scandal uh, <laughs> with the X-rated uh, star here, uh, supposedly there was a an order from an arbitration uh, there uh, against uh, Stormy Daniels. Stay tuned for that. But that is only uh, the Times got this uh, wrong. Actually, that is a side issue on uh, Mr. Mueller's actual investigation. We'll have more of it on the week. That word, uh, that uh, was, excuse me, embarking on the high level negotiation will uh, poise a uh, stiff challenge to administration, which uh, has uh, built its uh, Korean uh, policy around imposing crippling uh, sanctions. Well, the sanctions uh, basically are not uh, working. One of the things that happened here I was scheduled years in advance was the Winter Games uh, being on the Korean uh, Peninsula. It projected uh, the whole of the Korean Peninsula as a peaceful place. And this is something you, uh, uh, a fellow was telling me uh, that had once been in the uh, Korean Army uh, was saying that he watched the Olympics and depending if he watched he was Korean on Korean TV, or if he watched it on uh, NBC, uh, basically uh, was the uh, same uh, situation. Period. 
And others here, uh, let's see, Evan S. Uh, Mandros, an Asian advisor to uh, President uh, Barack Obama, said uh, any direct uh, talks uh, would uh, elevate uh, Kim. Well, and we talked about that. There's nothing for it. Uh, Kim will never give up his nukes, said us, according to uh, Mandros. Get him right here. Kim played Moon and is now playing uh, Trump. Well, playing DJ Trump is a bit hard because DJ Trump is uh, at any time in history playing everyone. So this is where the policy has been uh, elevated. And you you can see from this uh, advisor here uh, that uh, the Wilsonian policy is there, the racist policy, and that's what got in the end. Uh, Madeleine Albright, uh, she uh, went to... Uh, Phnom Penh in uh, 2000, that would be 18 years ago, uh, near the end of the Clinton administration. She planned to arrange a, uh, a meeting with it was Kim Jong-un, the father of the current leader. Uh, but uh, Clinton uh, decided to go with Wilson and uh, not take the risk, skip the trip, and used his last week in office to make a race uh, for a Mideast peace, which he never was able to obtain. The problem there is and has been the framework, uh, period. There's a nice picture here that appeared on uh, Korean uh, TV. I believe it's on Korean, t- yeah, Korean uh, TV. China, incidentally, is the big player here. They try to avoid that in the news, but they uh, see this as an elevation not only of their partner, uh, Mr. Ung, but at the same time, um, Japan has been, as they say, put out of the picture. And Korea has taken its own uh, place in the world news. Now, once again, and we'll leave this uh, segment here, but uh, the whole... uh, news gathering a cycle the international news gathering cycle is different that's what we try to do uh, with br boston red on the world is present the news in a different uh, from a different light from the opinions of people around the world now cnn tried to do that uh, with christian uh, amanpour uh, to limit his success because the american people uh, i hate to use the word trained but are not accustomed to, generally speaking, watching or listening to international affairs. What they get is a um, truncated uh, version of international affairs, which in itself is westernized. They'll hear about Rocket Man, Little Rocket Man, uh, what is going on in the Mideast in terms of what the Zionists uh, say is going on in the Mideast. That's why one Israeli was telling me that uh, he never watched, and that was his specialty foreign policy, uh, but he grew up in California, but he never watched the uh, American uh, TV or the newspapers. Uh, he would do her rats, or uh, Jerusalem Post, etc., which you get a different view. You get a biased view, but not as biased as uh, coming from the U.S., so what does this say about the U.S. Uh, long term in terms of news coverage? Well, you start to get more and more news from an international standpoint. Now, RT, the Russian station, uh, government station, tried to do some of that. And then now things imposed on them as Russian as a foreign agent. The Iranian TV uh, is still uh, beaming out there. But as to how many people in the U.S. are watching it, it's a little different. At one time, Al Jazeera actually uh, had a a comparable uh, bureau in uh, Washington. And a number of people are there, uh, American uh, political figures, etc. I don't want to remember her, uh, was there. And they all had to leave. And Al Jazeera is now uh, back in Doha. So they moved out of North America, which is unfortunate. Because they do, in fact, uh, cover the news. But getting out there is as hard as Internet uh, radio. Sometimes there are hundreds of thousands of Internet radio uh, broadcasts. It's sometimes called podcasting. There's a 
a problem with that. Some of the podcasters want to call themselves podcasters. I call them just pods. Because the big debate as to where this is going, and you look at some of the players are now out there, uh, particularly the outlet that uh, we're on, uh, iHeart Media, all of them bankrupt. It doesn't mean very much at all. But what's what what uh, is projected there that all these mediums, to a certain extent, are going to on demand. But the vehicle is still basically radio. Others would argue, I don't want to get too far off topic here. Others would argue, well, yeah, at least uh, but that's in the car. The, the car uh, itself will play uh, less a role in the coming years in the American life, especially as we go to self-driving cars. Uh, people will be able to, when that becomes a quote-unquote mature uh, industry, it'll take several years after it. It comes out, but things mature much more quickly now. You will have the archival uh, situation. You will still have a live broadcast or semi-live broadcast like what we are doing here. Let me just very quickly recap a few things here. Uh, women in Spain earn a 13% less than men for similar work. A study there, and you can check out program find that out. One in three uh, Spanish women have uh, felt... Sexually harassed, a new poll uh, finds there also. We'll have more. This is, uh, let's see, Metroscopia, uh, one in every four uh, women there. And we'll we'll get that poll uh, in uh, for you on the week. That was a uh, journalist at uh, El País, that is a Spanish paper, were also on the... Uh, the strike. Uh, they were striking in uh, Madrid, Barcelona, Brazil, and in their uh, bureaus in uh, Mexico. So they were uh, uh, playing uh, the card very high. Let's go now to the University of Virginia. That is Larry uh, Sabato's uh, shop. It says we find Mr. Sabato. This is uh, by uh, Kyle uh, Klondick. Uh, he's the managing editor of the Crystal Ball. Uh, and we won't spend a lot of time on this, but they moved uh, several races up to uh, toss-ups. One is Pennsylvania 18. That's a special election. Uh, is now a toss-up. Uh, Democratic incumbents in uh, strong positions. This is the... Uh, Part of the headline here, the tech away, less than a week to go. This is in PE 18. The special mo- election moves from uh, leans Republican into a toss-up. In addition, ratings have changed. We're making a 25. This is the uh, crystal ball of a changes in the House, all in favor of Democrats. No Democrat incumbent uh, is now rated worse than likely Democrat. A very interesting uh, situation there. Making his debut uh, in our competitive uh, house race is uh, the chamber's most prominent mayor, little Paulie Ryan. He's in Wisconsin 1. While his district is uh, competitive but clearly Republican leaning on paper, it does sound there. Let me just run down some of these districts here. Tom O'Halloran um, in uh, Arizona 1. A leans Democrat, the likely Democrat. Amiri uh, Beamer in uh, California 7, like a Democrat there, they moved it up. Vernon and Buchanan in uh, Florida 16, safe Republican to likely Republican. Murphy in uh, Florida 7, like a Democrat, was lean Democrat. Rod Bloom, he's in Iowa, leans Republican to a toss up. That's Iowa 1. Lope Slack uh, in uh, Iowa 2, a uh, safe uh, Democrat there. I heard of that person. Mike uh, Boyce in Illinois 12 has been moved uh, to lean Republican to a toss up. Jake Berman, that is in Michigan 1, safe Republican, like a Republican. Mike Bishop 
That's Michigan. Eight leans Republican. Was likely Republican. Fred Upton. That's another Michigan district. Uh, likely Republican rating. He's been hanging all around. He was safe. Uh, six. Tom uh, Wahlberg. That's Michigan. Uh, seven likely Republican there. Eric uh, Paulson. In Minnesota, three has been rated a toss-up. Very interesting there. Yeah, there's a so-called moderate Republican who is a dead species these days. Bud, uh, out of North Carolina, 13, leans Republican there. Pittinger, out of North Carolina, 9, leans Republican. These are moved from like a Republican to lean Republican. And uh, Castor, she's in uh, New Hampshire, too. Safe Democrat there. She's been running... She's a porter uh, from toss-up to lean Democrat. That's an open seat in uh, New Hampshire. Maloney in uh, New York, 18, a safe Democrat there. Tom uh, Susie, I think that's how it's pronounced. A safe Democrat there, that's New York, 3. Zilden, that's uh, Republican District, New York, 1. From likely to lean, uh, Steve uh, Charbert. That is Ohio 1. From likely to lean, uh, Steve uh, Russell in Oklahoma. Five likely Republican, safe Republican there. Rufus uh, in uh, uh, Pennsylvania, PA 17, has moved to toss up. Now, this is 18 here. Uh, this is, used to be Murphy's. Leans Republican to a toss-up there. Pete Sessions, that's in Texas. Uh, 32 leans Republican. they has been around. Ron uh, Kine, that's Wisconsin 3, to a safe Democrat there. Paul Ryan, likely Republican. He is a Wisconsin 1. A uh, working-class uh, district there. And that's going to be interesting in uh, Pennsylvania 18, which direction that is going. Uh, Siscone, uh declaration that he was uh, Trump before Trump was, uh, is probably doesn't play all that well in uh, the Trump uh, skeptical uh, Allegheny County that is in uh, Pittsburgh is where he's running, but that's out in the county, not in the city of Pittsburgh at all. And there's a new map also in a Pennsylvania sense. We think it's uh, it really matters that uh, that much who wins a uh, large part because the district is uh, going uh, to uh, effectively as soon as the election is over uh, dysfunction, uh, assuming the uh, U.S. Supreme Court doesn't uh, throw it out. So Coney wins or not, uh, we wonder if a loss or a close election might have some effect on Republican candidates. Recruitment and our incumbent retention. Republicans scored a recruiting victory in uh, the Senate a few weeks ago when uh, Kevin uh, Kramer, he is a uh, Republican, uh, decided uh, to challenge uh, Senator Heidi Camp, that's up in uh, North Dakota. After previously ruling it out, Kramer knows exactly why he decided to take the plunge. But uh, we suspect a, a modest uptick for Republicans after the uh, State of the Union uh, address there. Republican positions have eroded uh, again then, and the Democrats lead in a generic ballot. When we looked at these generic ballots, uh, we'll look at that tomorrow night on the uh, week that was. Pennsylvania 17 from Leans Republican to a toss-up in a 17. Uh, Rufus, whether he is a sitting incumbent or not, uh, there in a 17, not 18. Uh, in the GOP wave, that was a 2010-2014 Democrats knocked off just two Republican incumbents. Very hard to knock off incumbents, whether they be or not. Joseph uh, Cato uh, down in Louisiana and Charles DeJou out in Hawaii. Remember, both of them uh, 
The two briefly held a seat of thanks to a plurality victory in an all-party special election. It didn't stick around very long, though, however. We're moving a race, uh, Army uh, Barra uh, in California, 7, Tom uh, Halloran uh, in uh, Arizona. And we already went over those uh, particular races. We'll move on down here. Crystal ball ratings. Uh, a lot of these are um, the toss-ups. We've already ran over uh, some of the, uh, these are Republican toss-ups. Uh, leans Republican many waters that's out in California be interesting after uh, the big fights uh, there uh, in uh, California over the sanctuary cities how that is going to run Karen Handel now that's Mr. Alsop's district there leans Republican uh, who else here uh, David Young in Iowa 3 enough of me with that district Kansas, too, is open for Jenkins. Andy Barr, uh, these are all leans Republican. In uh, Kentucky, Mike Bishop in Minis- uh, no, Michigan, 8. Uh, Ted uh, Budd in uh, North Carolina, 13. Pettinger in North Carolina, 9. These are all leans Republican. Um, Cumberson in Texas, 7. Sessions, I think we all talked about that's Texas, 32. And uh, Mia Love, uh, an African American out in Utah, four, and Scott uh, Taylor in Virginia, two. And these are some likely Republicans. We won't name all of them. Rodney Davis, Illinois, 13. Fred Upton, uh, Michigan, six. Uh, who else uh, that has any national record edition? Well, Kathy uh, Rogers out in uh, Washington 5 and Paul Ryan in uh, uh, Wisconsin 1. So those are some that are likely and some that lean. A lot of lean Republicans there. Uh, and a safe Democrat here um, Meacham in uh, Pennsylvania 1. Now, there's some toss-ups here also. Uh, Minnesota won. That was where uh, Walls um, had that seat. And also Minnesota 8. They, their toss-ups there. They're open. That was where Nolan, who is retiring uh, there. Uh, and Leeds Democrat. Uh, McSally's old seat as Arizona 2. Oh, Daryl, uh, burglar alarm, car alarm, Icer, uh, he's retired. That is an open uh, seat in uh, California 49, Cali- Florida 27. That's Ross uh, Latham. That's open. Those are lean Democrats there. And uh, Rose, enough for me with that. Some likely Democrats. I think we went over most of these uh, that are likely uh, here. Peterson, uh, Minnesota 7, been around a very long time. Cartwright, uh, Pennsylvania 8, Florida, that's Murphy in Florida 7. Charlie the Tuna Chris, uh, Florida uh, 13, is now in the Congress. He had been the governor, he's been around there in, uh, a very, very long time. Anyway, this will do it uh, for the uh, crystal ball part here. We're getting set up, uh, we'll have the... Uh, March Madness uh, selection show on Sunday. We'll talk more about uh, March Madness on the week that was. But to finish this up here, let's go to NBA scores last night. The Nets were at the Hornets. Uh, the Nets, who uh, used to be the Jersey Nets, they moved to New York now, 125-111. The uh, 76ers in Heat in uh, Florida, 108 for the Heat and 99 uh, for the 76ers. The Celtics and T Wolves in uh, Minnesota. The Celtics uh, finally won one, 117 to 109. The Suns and Thunder in OKC. Thunder 115 to 87. The Spurs and Warriors out in California. Warriors at 110 to 107 there. On to Major League Baseball. Yes, we are back in business here. This is spring training. Toronto and the Orioles at Toronto 9 to 3. 
the Blue Jays had uh, 16 hits for years, and Baltimore, and otherwise known as the Orioles, had nine nine uh, hits and two errors. The Rays and a Red Sox tied 6-6. Six, six. The Phillies and a Yankees, Phillies 7-6. The Astros and Atlanta, Astros 6-4. The Mets and Nationals, it was Nationals 8-5 in that contest. The Tigers and the Pirates, 8-3. to three, uh, The Pirates over the Tigers. The Marlins and the Cardinals, a, a close game, 5-4 to four cards. The Royals and White Sox, the Royals blank the Sox, a 12-zip. The uh, D-backs and the Brewers, uh, D-backs 11-6. D-backs have a potential to have a good team this year. They did finish strong last year, but not strong enough. The Angels and Athletics, uh, Athletics uh, 7-3. The uh, White Sox and Rangers, Rangers 5-4. The Padres and our Cubbies, Cubbies 10-4 in that contest. Cubbies had 15 hits, no errors. And the Padres, 9 hits and 1 error. Chatwood was a winner. Lyles was a loser. No idea who Mr. Lyles is. Anyway, the Reds and the Rockies. They're three to two Rockies over the Reds. The Dodgers and Cleveland. Cleveland four to one in that contest. And finally, the Giants and Mariners. A West Coast contest. It could have been one, but they were in spring training in Arizona. Anyway, nonetheless, four zip uh, Giants. And on we go to college basketball. Louisville, number one, Virginia. Virginia, 75 to 58. Marquette, and number two, Villanova. It was all Villanova, 94 to uh, 70. Uh, St. John's, and number three, Xavier. Xavier, 88 to 60. Notre Dame, and number five, Duke. Duke, 88 to 70. Oklahoma State, and number nine, uh, Kansas. Kansas uh, played like a rated team, 82 to 68. North Carolina in the University of Miami. And North Carolina, number 12, 82 to uh, 65. Texas and Texas Tech. The Red uh, Raiders were there. Number 14 is how they were ranked. 73 to uh, 69. Colorado and number 15, Arizona. Arizona, 83 to uh, 67. Baylor and number 18, uh, West Virginia. It was all West Virginia. 78 uh, to 65, Boston College, and number 19, Clemson, 90 to 82, Clemson. University, I assume, of Virginia here, uh, and uh, number 22, Nevada, 79 to 74, Nevada. Now, do these games mean very much for March Madness? No, March Madness is very interesting. It depends on how the uh, brackets are set up and very close elimination a game. The Flyers and the Brewers. The Bruins, excuse me. Uh, Bruins are free, free to two. The Jets and the Devils. Jets free to two over the Devils. Of New Jersey. The Avalanche and Blue Jackets, Blue Jackets 5-4 uh, to four in an overtime. The Sabres and the Senators of Ottawa, Sabres 4-3. to three. Buffalo Sabres. Anyway, the Golden Knights uh, shut out the Red Wings for zip. The Rangers and the Lightning, uh, Lightning 6-3 to three. over the Rangers. The Canadians and the, the Pampas. Of Florida. The Canadians were shut out 5 zip. The Ducks of Anaheim. And the Predators. Predators 4 to 2 was the final there. And let's see if we can get Hurricanes and Blackhawks of uh, Chicago. It was the Hurricanes 3 uh, to 2 there. The Hurricanes of Carolina. The Islanders, Island, Islanders and Orioles, a final. They're uh, two to one. Hmm. Capitals and Kings. Kings three to one. There, the Kings of Los Angeles and the Washington Capitals. The Blues of St. Louis and the Sharks 
of San Jose. The Blues were shut out by the Sharks. This will uh, do it uh, for us. Uh, we we cut, we got it under. We try to make these as uh, concise as possible. Sometimes we miss the boat on it, but um, we do, and we uh, encourage you to stay for the entire uh, broadcast if you uh, can. And we also try to uh, pinge uh, various uh, studies, articles, etc., where you can come back to those and get a full view. Of, of what is going on. Have a good weekend, everyone. We'll talk to you on the week that was. We also will appear here as a numbers man on uh, this week in economics. We'll be talking about the new job numbers, which will be out uh, shortly here. Uh, it's projected uh, the uh, rate of unemployment could go down as low as a uh, 4%. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about a quote unquote hot economy or what's technically defined as a high-pressure economy, and a low-pressure economy, back to uh, the late uh, Dr. Arthur Oakham. Anyway, nonetheless, we'll have all that information there. And uh, finally, we almost have this finished, uh, the uh, an open-source report. Uh, for Sunday, uh, we started working on this. It'll be the post office uh, 2018. That will either appear... On a Sunday on most of the channels or early next week. Good day.